Hello and welcome to another Attorney Reporter exclusive interview with top attorneys here in the USA Today. Let's go ahead and move forward with our first legal inquiry. Counselor, if someone is involved in an auto accident, do they really need a personal injury auto accident attorney? And if so, how soon should they start looking? Not every person injured in an automobile accident needs an attorney. Let me make an analogy to uh, uh, do you need a doctor? If you cut your finger and put a Band-Aid on it and handle it yourself, you don't need to go to a doctor. So if you have a small injury, you go to the emergency room, you follow up a couple times with a doctor, you do not need an attorney. And I talk to people all the time, four and five times a week talking to them and say, look, you really don't need me. I can't add any value to your case. But if you're seriously injured, in my opinion, you do need an attorney, and uh, let me just refer you to insurance company statistics and documents. Uh, they will say that people that are represented by counsel get two to three times the amount in settlement that people that are unrepresented. The reason for that is someone that is unrepresented doesn't really even know what their case is. A lot of times they think the insurance company is out to help them when the reality is that the insurance company is not their friend. Their insurance company is there to pay them as little as possible. And ultimately, uh, the insurance company is going to say, hey, here's our offer, take it or leave it. And if you don't have experienced counsel, you're going to be stuck taking a lowball offer. What an attorney brings to the table is they gather the evidence, they guide you through the whole process, there's certain mistakes that can be made. They guide you away from those mistakes, and they're ready, if the offer is still a lowball offer, to file a lawsuit and prosecute your case. Most cases don't go to trial, but in many times you have to force the insurance company's hand by taking the case to litigation. And the sooner you get an attorney for a serious accident case, the better you are because you don't want witnesses disappearing, the scene gets changed, photographs of your injuries, photographs of the vehicles. There's a lot of important things that can be done right away by an attorney. People need to get somebody in there for them to cover their back who knows what they're doing right now. Well said, Counselor. Now. We all know that there are plenty of auto accident personal injury attorneys to choose from. But from your years of experience, how would you recommend that someone go about finding a competent personal injury attorney that they feel comfortable with? Let me tell you what I think are the most important, uh, maybe top four things that you look for in a personal injury attorney. The first thing and the key thing is, are they a trial attorney? Anybody can call themselves a personal injury attorney. but they may not have any trial experience at all. You want to verify with them how many trials have you had involving personal injuries. Were they wrongful deaths? Were they back injury cases? Uh, and, and what were those results? And, you know, that is very, very important. And the importance of it is you're no better off uh, than if you're just representing yourself if you don't have an attorney that's going to be able to go to trial. Otherwise, the offer comes and the attorneys he's scared to go to trial. He's banging on you to take, take a lowball offer. The other important thing is, has the attorney been peer review rated and does he have a high rating? There are private agencies that do these peer reviews. Martindale Hubble has been around for years. The highest rating they give is a preeminent rating. AVO, uh, their highest rating is a superb rating. In Ohio and other states, there's something called the uh, Super Lawyers magazine. And they uh, put uh, lawyers in their magazine and, and list them as super lawyers. So this is all peer review rated. Uh, other lawyers uh, give input to this. And so that's an important thing. The third thing is what their own clients say about them. What are those experiences have been like? You'll see a lot of websites have no testimonials at all, nothing on there about what their clients say. It's not that hard to ask a client, would you mind saying something about how my services were? And you can see on those websites what clients have said about these attorneys and do your investigation that way. And then you can pick up the phone and talk to 
uh, one or two of those attorneys. The biggest thing you can tell is if uh, you call up and you get a, uh, uh, you don't even get an operator, you get a uh, voicemail and the guy doesn't call you back for 24 hours, that you can just take him and cross him off your list. Because, you know, it's important that an attorney not only be a, a great trial lawyer, but someone who communicates with you and advises you. So, yes, check out a couple attorneys at least so that you have a little bit to compare from. Due to the downturn in the economy, there are a lot more people using motorcycles for transportation. With that in mind, what are the three critical mistakes that motorcycle accident victims need to avoid? First of all, they need to find a biker attorney. Now, what you need to avoid is somebody that says, I'm a motorcycle attorney. Anybody can say, I represent motorcyclists. That doesn't mean they ride a motorcycle. It's important if they ride a motorcycle because the motorcycle community is out there and they love each other sincerely and they take care of their own. And a motorcycle attorney is not going to look at you, not going to care how you look, not going to look at care if you've got tattoos from head to toe. It doesn't matter. He's going to look at what kind of person you are. Uh, and you're going to have some kind of bond with your attorney. And also a motorcycle attorney is going to know the law, has been experienced with how you've handled your bike, and understand whether you handled your bike the way you should have. The second mistake that I see people, uh, motorcyclists make, is they hire a motorcycle attorney without regard to whether he's a trial attorney. Just because a guy rides a bike and happens to be an attorney doesn't mean that he knows how to put a personal injury case together and knows how to try one if necessary. So the second big thing that people have to do is find out if this attorney they're talking to is a trial attorney. Find out how many trials he's had. Has he had any motorcycle trials, car accident trials? What kind of injuries has he handled? And then the final thing is something that you have to do before the accident. You have to get enough underinsured, uninsured motorist coverage to cover you in the event that the person that causes your injury has no insurance or very little insurance. In the state of Ohio, the minimum limits are $12,500. So if somebody could cause you a serious injury that's worth $100,000, $200,000, and all they have is $12,500. People say, well, I got full coverage. Well, full coverage doesn't mean you have adequate coverage. It's the dollar amount. And then do your due diligence when you go to hire an attorney. Make sure they're a biker that rides and a trial attorney. Thank you so much for your input and your help today. And to our viewers, thank you so much for tuning in to our Attorney Reporter exclusive here at the Law TV Network. Until the next time.